happy Independence Day to every one of you. God bless you all for coming to celebrate this day with us. And for those that are joining on the webcast, we appreciate you too to begin this special devotional service. We would like to sing together our national anthem, which will be introduced for us by the brass on the platform, and we will then rise to sing together. Shall we do that, please? Be seated. Thank you.
Once again, you are all very welcome to our devotional service. May the Lord bless you all for coming. We would like to extend a similar warm welcome to all our internet audience or radio app audience, wherever you may be. We pray 
that the Lord will bless you too. It's our turn to sing together, and we are beginning with hymn number 164 from our hymn book, 164. And as we're preparing for that, we appreciate the renditions that we have enjoyed from our choir and orchestra. They began with Vatio Hymn of the Republic by William Steve, the brass orchestra, and then at the front of the Vatio by Mrs. C. H. Morris, choir and brass gave that to us. Then Keep on the Firing Line by John Peterson, the male choir that we have just enjoyed. Now it's our turn to praise God with this song of devotion to begin with. 164, great God of wonders, all thy ways display the attributes the divine. We sing in all the three verses, um, sitting down after the introduction to be given to us by the orchestra, 164. Amen. 294 will be our next song. 294 will be our next song. Blow ye that trumpet, blow the gladly solemn sound. Let all the nations know to earth's remotest bound. The year of Jubilee is come as we are entering into the 64th year. We are celebrating 63rd. By the grace of God, we shall be entering into the 64th. We are praying that it will be a year of jubilee. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's say verses 1, 4, and 5. Verses 1, 4, and 5, after the introduction from the organist, please.
Amen. That is good singing. We sing again for 194. 494. Oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing. Victory is now. Amen. Let's take again from this one, two, and four. Again, sitting down, this is one, two, and four. The introduction from the Agnes, please. <laughs> Amen. We will, by the grace of God, by his grace. Our song before prayer is hymn number 699 from our hymn book. 699 will be our song before prayer. It's again a song of jubilee. That is our prayer as we rejoice in our 63rd independence anniversary. We are rejoicing in the hope that we are going to jubilate at last. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We will stand up to sing those three verses um, prayerfully. And then at the end, we have Brother Ajiboye. We come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. 699, we stand up to sing the three verses. And then we have the congregational prayer. For those who can manage to stand throughout the three verses, you are welcome to do so. And if you are unable to do that, don't worry, remain seated, just join us in singing. We are going to do this after the introduction from the orchestra.
our almighty God, the great God of heaven. Thank you for guiding us here today. Thank you for the way you have taught us your word. Thank you because you are ever alive. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, for granting Nigeria 63 years of independence. Thank you for the power that has sustained this country. Lord, we are looking up to you today. There are still pockets of oppressions, captivity, and a host of other things holding people bound. But the great emancipator, you can give total freedom. And that is what we want. We are requesting for our country today. Lord, make everybody free. We want freedom from oppression, freedom from hunger, freedom from every form of bondage, even the lawful captives. Lord, set free. Jesus, please set free. When you set free, you will move us from bondage to freedom, from hunger to plenty, from poverty to wealth. That kind of total deliverance. Lord, visit Nigeria. Visit everybody here. We want you to do this for us. And we want you to continue to be our deliverer. Yes. Even today, you have sent your message to us, and we are still expecting more. Yes. Open our hearts. Yes. Feel your servant. Yes. We have heard a prophecy that this is the fourth year of our anniversary of independence. will be a year of jubilee. Yes. Right from today. Yes. Oh, Lord, right from today. Yes. Turn the table in our favor. Yeah. Turn the table in the favor of your children. Yeah. Thank you because you are able to do all these things yeah. and even much more. Yeah. And the kind of freedom that we see us through into your kingdom, yeah. spiritual deliverance, yeah. you will do it here today. Yeah. Thank you, O oh Lord, yeah. because nobody will continue under the bondage of the enemy Amen. right from today. Amen. And all your people will be free. Amen. Thank you for doing this for us. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayers. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, on behalf of the ministry, I say happy 63rd Independence Anniversary of our dear country, to every one of you. We thank God for what the Lord has done for us either too. We know that he who has helped us till now, he will help us to the end. In Jesus' mighty name. We want to welcome our internet audience. Thank you so much for joining us and to be part of this celebration. We pray that the Lord will visit you too, wherever you may be. For those that are attending our service for the first time at this location, we welcome you, we appreciate you, we pray that the Lord will bless you. After you have prayed very well at the end of the service this morning, please, we have a tradition of welcoming you and um, just to let you know how much we appreciate your presence and your determination to worship with us today. We have our greeters and um, our ushers at the uh, back end of this sanctuary. They will be glad to navigate you to where um, we have prepared for a reception for you. Meeting of Anthony Group 1 members today at 1 p.m. And then in continuation of our celebration of our independence today, we are not going to have the usual revival and evangelistic service at 5 p.m. Instead, as announced before now, we're going to have prayer for our nation, and that will be from 4 p.m. through to 6 p.m. We encourage everyone to be part of that. If there is anything that we need more, 
in our country right now is God. And we can only get to that God through prayers. So we want to invite everyone, and those of you online, please join us too to take part in that special prayer meeting this afternoon from 4 through to 6. Uh, during the course of the week, we're going to have all our usual meetings, all the prayer meetings. And then on Wednesday, um, we are yet to start our um, weeknight Bible study. Instead, for this coming Wednesday, we're going to have um, our examination or a review, if you like, of the Sunday School book that we've just finished, and that is book 31. And that is going to be on um, Wednesday at 6 p.m. The same Bible quiz we hold at Isaac John at 6 p.m. and Shikwe Olu at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we have our prayer 6 to 7. Schedule of services next Sunday will be as today, by the grace of God, Sunday school in the morning, uh, children 1 at 8.30, adult 9 a.m., devotional service 10.45, and then in the evening at 5 p.m., revival and evangelistic service. Please um, take note and be part of that. Shall we listen to this special announcement? Sister Grace Ibukmoluwa Ibrahim of Anthony Group 3, and Brother Temito Kweori Malade Solomon of Anthony Group 4, both at this um, branch or the headquarters here, have decided to be joined together in holy wedlock in our church. Any objection to this union by any individual or a group of people should be registered with the ministry. This is the first announcement. Sister Uluwatu Sin Damilola Agumbiade and Brother Abayomi Samuel Alade Mome, both of Akiode Church in Lagos South area, have also agreed to be joined together in holy wedlock in our church. Any objection to this union by any individual or group of people should be registered with the ministry immediately. This is the second announcement. Okay, we're going to listen now to the first special, Onward Christian Soldiers by W. H. Jude, which will be given to us by the choir. And then we have the Bible reading for our devotional service this morning, selected from the book of Jonah, the third chapter, reading from verse 1 through to verse 6, which will be taken by Brother Shegun Adenuga. And then we have the last special, I'm on the battlefield by R.J. Hughes, a solo by Brother Bode Efontoye. At the end of the word of exhortation, we want to encourage you to take advantage of the altar benches that we have in front here, men on this side, ladies on this side, to be sure that you pray through to your own independence and anniversary blessing. The Lord is already preparing and has even prepared to bless each and every one of us. I want to encourage you that be sure you take your own blessing at the end of the service. God bless you.
the scripture reading for the Independence Day anniversary is taken from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. We are reading through verses 1 to 6. Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Three. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Four, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Five, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Six, for what came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in arches. Oh, 
the world behind me, bound for the promised land. Wherever he will lead me, the Lord will hold my hand. I'll never need to fear, for I know his promise sure now. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. For my Lord, I have promised him that I surely will serve him till I die. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. my savior it won't be very long i join the heavenly chorus and sing the victor song so while i'm here below i will praise him as i go now i'm on the battlefield for my Till I die, oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Shall we open to the same book that we have taken our text from, the book of Jonah, the third chapter. We've read the beginning of the story. I just want to read the end of that incident. Jonah chapter 3, verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil Amen. that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Yeah. Growing up as a child in my primary school days in the late 60s, there was a popular slogan all over the country of Nigeria. This we will be saying in the schools. This you continue to hear over the radio. And it says, to keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. So popular that the announcement on the radio from time to time you'll be hearing to keep Nigeria won is a task that must be done. If you look at the, um, the anthem of our country, as well as the pledge, you will come across quite often the word unity. And I was thinking, why was this so popular during those my school days? Why was it made a task for everyone? 
and I decided to dig a little bit into the history. And I understood that this certainly had some connection with the history of Nigeria. Prior to the amalgamation of the northern and southern part of Nigeria in 1914 to be together, there were so many protectorates, including Southwestern Protectorate, Southeastern Protectorate, and then the Northern Protectorate, all of them with their de dependencies. All during this period, Nigeria was under the rule of our colonial master. Then later in 1957, I read that the um, eastern and western part of Nigeria attained a regional self-government, while in 1959, the northern part of Nigeria attained also their own self-government. And then on October 1, 1960, exactly 63 years ago today, Nigeria obtained independence from the United Kingdom. And not long after that, civil war broke out as some groups wanted to break out from the Federation, the result of which we had civil war between 1967 and 1970. And it was around this time that this popular saying, to keep Nigeria one, is a task that must be done. You can see that prior to this period, it's like getting Nigeria to come together as one has been a struggle. But eventually that happened. And as soon as that happened, as we can see, um, problems started in terms of some groups that still want to uh, break off. And then the military ruler at that time decided to galvanize the entire country under the slogan, to keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. But thanks be to God, as a result of prayers of God's children and the determination to carry out that task, as well as the effort of each individual, the war ended. Nigeria remained one. Amen. And we thank God for that. But if you look back over 50 years on from this time, Nigeria of today is facing another terrible situation. The situation we are facing now is not that of uh, uh, open civil war. The situation we are facing now is the one more terrible than the one that we had when that slogan was going on, to keep Nigeria one. Our case today, our trouble today, our situation today is also in need of a task that must be done, a task that everyone must do. And perhaps I decided to give it another slogan, and that is, to keep Nigeria clean is a task that must be done. Nigeria needs cleansing. Yes. And it's a task of everyone. After all, when we talk about Nigeria, who is Nigeria? You are a Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian. It is when we come together, we now say the country of Nigeria belonging to you and belonging to me as Nigerians. So when we say to keep Nigeria clean, we mean to keep ourselves clean. It's a task that we must all engage in. And unless we engage in that task seriously, the wrath of God is looming upon our country, just as it is mentioned in the book of Psalm, the ninth Psalm, verse 17, that says, the wicked 
shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. As we celebrate our independence, may we remember God. May we turn to God. If you don't want our nation to be turned to hell, we must return to God. Nigeria needs cleanup of our sins, of our iniquities, our transgressions, and our filthiness. Therefore, to keep Nigeria clean is a task that must be done. This cleansing or this cleaning up that I'm talking about, I'm not referring to the environmental days that we observe when we do general cleaning. That is essential. We should do that. But I'm referring to clean up of our individual sins and that of our nation. It was similar in the days of Isaiah. Let's quickly look at that. Our situation that can be compared to the days of Isaiah, chapter 1, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, the message that came, if you read from verse 4, we can actually say this is describing our country today. Our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should, we, ye, why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. It say your country. Let me say our country is desolate. Our cities are burned with fire. Our land, strangers, devoid in our presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. We need God, and God is ready to answer our prayers. God is ready to clean us. We have a task that must be done. When we were singing that those days, when we will be repeating that those days to each other or in the schools and everywhere, we meant it. And God, in his own mercy, even though it wasn't a prayer. But I believe God's people were praying. Actually, when Nigeria got independence on the 1st of October, 1960, I was only approaching my fourth year. I was born on the 3rd of October. And the independence was on the 1st of October. So I was just approaching my fourth year. I didn't know much about all of that. But as I was growing, and I began to learn this, to keep Nigeria warm, we will be doing it with flag and with everything. We were doing all of that. God, in his own mercy, converted it to prayer. And he answered our prayer. And he did not allow Nigeria to break. If God can do that for us, how much more when we determine that Nigeria must be cleansed. Nigeria needs cleanup. And if you do your task, if I do my task just as we were doing in those uh, 60s, God will surely answer our prayers. He will help us too. He will make us a holy nation. This is what he did in the passage that we read in the book of Jonah, the case of the Ninevites, when God gave instruction to that prophet to let them know that destruction is looming and they needed to do something. 
Have you heard of eight word sermon having such a great impact upon a whole country? The sermon of Noah consisted of eight words, not more than that. I want to believe that these people, yes, they were in sins and God saw their wickedness, but the word of God melt their heart. May God melt the heart of Nigerians. Amen. I want to believe that they had a receptive heart. May all the words and all the exhortations and injunctions and cautions that God has been sending to us as Nigerians, may we be receptive. Amen. May we be sensitive. Amen. May we take it to be a task that must be done. They took it to be a task that must be done. So after that sermon found in the fourth verse, in verse five, so the people of Nineveh, may the people of Nigeria believe God. Amen. The people of Nineveh, they proclaimed a fast. May we also do that. Amen. When it says they put on sackcloth, it means they repent. And that repentance was not just left to the masses. The word of God says, from the greatest of them, we want this task that must be done, the task of repentance, to start from our leaders. Amen. Our leaders, down to the lowest, we all need repentance. The Ninevites, they did that, and God saw their works. God will look down as we are celebrating. This is our 63rd independence anniversary. God will look down, and we have mercy upon us too, if we will do what they did. They called upon God because of their wickedness. The word of God says that Nineveh was a great country. Nigeria is a great country. And we can also add that the country of Nigeria, as a country, we are full of wickedness. And God loves us so much that in our wickedness, he has made us to still see another year. May his name be praised. Amen. And may we not get taken for granted. May we take it as an opportunity to return to God and say, God, have mercy upon us. Clean us up. That is our task. Woe unto us that we have sinned. Our transgressions are many. Our backslidings are increased. We are wise to do evil. Have you not seen that? Have you not noticed that? But to do good, we have no knowledge. Our iniquities and our sins have turned away good things from us. There are so many good things that I believe God desired for us as Nigerians. But our sins and our wickedness and our iniquities, they have turned away those good things. We are full of deceit, lies, and unfortunately, as a country, we love it so. May God forgive us. Amen. We need cleanup. I continue to say, it is a task that must be done if you want the mercy of God. Our wickedness is known to God. And this message that God sent to the nation of Nineveh, God is sending to us on this anniversary day that we must do something. It's a clear message and it must be done. We need to repent of our sins of ungodliness, our sins of shedding of blood, our sins of rebellion, our sins of no regard for God. I pray that we will all take this task seriously. On this day of our celebration, just like the Ninevites did, 
and God will give us the same result. Amen. So when they called upon God, what did God say he would do? Verse 9 says, who can tell? That was the proclamation of the king. Let us repent. Let's turn to God. Who can tell? Even if we too think that we have done so much iniquities and wickedness, let us borrow something from this. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? We have the assurance of the word of God. We can tell that if we genuinely turn to God, if we genuinely repent of our sins and wickedness, God will have mercy upon us. Nigeria will be great again. Nigeria will be as before, that a sought after country. A country that people would like to go, people would like to come to, people would like to leave. God can do that for us. To the extent that all those who have left, for one reason or another, they will look back and they will say, God is now in Nigeria. God has answered Nigeria. God is now looking after Nigeria. Nigeria has repented. God's shining face is upon Nigeria. And as they packed and they left, they will pack, they will repack and come back home. God can do that for us. Nigeria can be great again. Nigeria can be that country that everyone would like to live again. Nigeria, we can live take away that name. I don't want to stay in Nigeria. It was when I got to this country, I understand, I came back to Nigeria. I, I, that wasn't there before, the word Japa, whatever that means. I never know the meaning till today, but I know it's a, it's a slogan, Japa. He has Japa, he has Japa, he has Japa. Meaning that people that are going abroad, and I'm not blaming them at all, but all I'm saying is that God can make Nigeria to be great again, that those who japa, they will japa back. I believe God. The only solution to that is if we take the task of repentance as something that I must do, you must do, and our leaders must do, we will see what the Lord would do. And what did we read here? Verse 10. And God, hallelujah. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented. May God repent over Nigeria. Are we not, have, have, have we not suffered enough? And we are still suffering. But God can have pity. God can have mercy over the country of Nigeria. For those of us that were young, who knew what Nigeria was, we should be shedding tears in terms of what we see today, what is happening right now. I mentioned this last year, and I still want to mention it this year because of the situation that has changed for worse. That when I left Nigeria to study in the UK in 1983, the economy of Nigeria was robust to the extent that the BTA, Basic Traveling Allowance, I don't know what it is now, used to be 500 naira that you can apply for from the bank and you collect the equivalent of the country that you are going to. For my 500 naira, I collected $660 for 500 naira. And when I remitted my school fees, I will never forget that rate because I did it myself in Central Bank and my bank at that time. It was one pound 
to one naira seventeen kobo. As at yesterday, just yesterday, it is one pound, now 1,247 naira. Can you imagine? Can you just see the vast difference? I can't get my note of last year when I said this. I'm sure I didn't say one pound to 1,200. You can see the increase in terms of the way things are going. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Nigeria economy will be revamped. It will be buoyant again. But we all must have a task that must be done. And that task is repentance. That task is calling upon God. That task is returning to God. That task is pleading for God's mercy. That task is to let Jesus know that we have trampled under our feet your blood of redemption. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins. Cleanse us with your precious blood. I believe when we do that genuinely, Jesus, who is standing by the right hand of his Father, we look at the Father for my sake. Let Nigeria Amen. be great again Amen. for my sake. Amen. Look down in love and in mercy upon them. When we do our part, God will do his part. God will forgive us. In this same land, we are going to enjoy health and care. Amen. In this same land, we are going to have abundance of peace. Amen. In this same land, we shall hear again the voice of joy and gladness. Amen. Abundance of food supply. Amen. He will remove far away from us farming. Amen. He will favor us Amen. as we are ready for our task that must be done to call upon God in contrition and repentance, God will clean us up. He will heal our land. He will cause his face to shine upon us. He will revive us. He will revamp our economy. He will give us peace in the name of Jesus. You want to make clean up a task that must be done, both in your life and for Nigeria. You feel like praying and calling upon God? To do that task is a task that must be done. Tell yourself it's a task that I must do. You must do yours, I must do mine, and then we see what the Lord would do for us just as he did for us during the time of the civil war, just as he did for the people of Nineveh. Jesus is ready to do the same for us as we celebrate our 63rd anniversary. We say happy independence as we do our task. God bless you.
great God of heaven and earth. Thank you for the entrance of your word, which has enlightened us on our need for repentance and spiritual cleansing. Lord, your people are before you on bended knees. Send down the spirit of repentance upon us. Lord, forgive us our sins. Lord, come and heal our land. Make Nigeria great again. God, as we celebrate our independence, come and set souls free. We want that spiritual independence. Let us experience it this morning. Come and deliver. May we go home rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray.